Hello everyone, so welcome to another Python tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to create an Apple Catcher game using the Yersin Engine. So in my last video, I talked about collisions in Yersin Engine, and in this one, I'm going to briefly mention uh, user input from the keyboard. And with that, I feel like we have enough information and knowledge to make a fun game in the Yersin Engine. So here in this video, I'm going to show you how we can make an Apple Catcher game with the Yersin Engine, and I hope you like it. And mainly for this game, we're going to have an apple drop down from the top, and we're going to try to catch it as it's falling. And we're going to try to catch as many apples as we can. So let's start out with our blank Python file, and let's import the Ear Snow engine. So from Ear Snow import star. And also, we're going to implement the uh, random module. So from random, import rand. Int. And what this does is that it will let you generate a random number. We, you will see how we will use that in the future. So now let's create a window. App is equal to Yersena and app.run. And now that we have this, what I'm going to do is, uh, this just creates a window, and now I'm going to create our boundaries in the left and right. So our left wall is going to be a boundary on the left side, and this is going to be equal to an entity with the model equal to a quad. And we're going to set the color equal to color.green. And set the scale equal to 0 0.6, 10. Uh, and we're going to set the position equal to negative 7 on the x, 0 on the y, and 0 on the z. Now that I have the left wall, I can create our right wall. And instead of rewriting entity and this entire line, I could just write right wall is equal to duplicate left wall. And there's one parameter that I do want to change, and that's going to be the x position. So I'm going to write x is now equal to 7. And that just sets the x position equal to 7 instead of negative 7. So if I run this, you'll see that I now have my two borders on the left and right side. All right, great. So now let's add in our apple. And the apple is gonna be the thing that's falling from the top. And so apple is equal to entity, model is equal to quad, the texture, and this is a texture that I have on my computer. It's gonna be assets, or not assets. It's gonna be image, apple.png. And I'm going to set the position equal to, and now I'm going to generate a random position on the X. Otherwise, because I want the apple to fall at a random location. Otherwise, if you know where it's going to fall every single time, that's going to be pretty boring. So the position is going to be a rand int from the range negative 4 to 4. And that's going to be for the X value. Now for the Y value, I'm just going to set it as 10. So now that I've created my apple, I'm going to create my basket. And my basket is equal to an entity with the model equal to quad and the texture equal to image basket.png. Position is going to be, uh, I'm going to set the position to 0, negative 4. And you see that this is not going to be a random integer because I don't want my basket to be at a random integer. I want to know where my basket is starting out. So now if I save and run this, you'll see I have my basket at the bottom. And you can't see my apple because it's actually above this window. And now that we have this down, let's make the apple fall. So in order to make the apple fall, we need to create an update function up here. So to find update, and this update function is called once per frame. And we want to have a speed at which the apple falls. And so I'm going to create a variable called apple dy with a change in y. And I'm going to set this at negative 2. And so every single time this update function is called, I'm going to have my apple fall at this rate, negative 2. So what I'm going to do is create the global apple dy. And I'm going to change the y value or y position of the apple uh, as this update function 
is called. So apple.y is equal to the previous apple.y plus time.tt multiplied by apple underscore change in y. So if I save this and I run this, you'll see that the apple should be falling, which it does. And now it falls down and down below the screen. Alright, so we have that part working. Now let's actually try to add in a user input. Because you see here, if I try to press the left or right arrow keys, or A or D, you'll see that the basket's not moving. Or nothing is moving, in fact. And so I want to add that in so I can actually cache the apples. So now let's uh, basically have another variable down here, which is basket underscore DX. And it's going to be the change in X for the basket. And I'm going to set this to 5. So whenever I press the left arrow key, I want my basket to move left 5 units. If I want to press the right arrow key, I want my basket to move right 5 units. And that's what I'm going to do. So now in this update function, I will set basket.x equal to basket.x plus held, held keys. And inside here, um, inside the brackets, it's going to be a string for which arrow key. And in this case, it's going to be right arrow. Multiplied by time dot dt. Multiplied by basket dx. So if I press the right arrow key here, then the basket is going to go to the right um, five units. And now let's say I wanted to go to the left. So basket dot x is equal to basket dot x. And instead of plus, it's going to be minus held keys. And instead of right arrow, it's going to be left arrow times time dot dt times basket dx. And so this is the uh, simple way of getting your left and right arrow keys. And so if I save this and run, you'll see that when I press the right arrow keys, I move to the right. Left arrow key, I move to the left, and there you go. And so you saw that I missed the apple, or actually I didn't miss it. The apple passed through my basket. And let me try to run this again. Let me see if the apple is able to move at a different location. And you saw that the apple did uh, have a different x location this time because we did rand int. We generated a random number, so that's how you know that that is working that's generating a random number correctly. All right, so now let's check for a collision because you saw that the apple just passes through the basket and nothing really happens. So now I wanna to check to see if the apple does indeed hit the basket, I want to do something. And I'm going to get that info with a variable called hit info. And that's gonna be equal to apple.intersects. And now I want to check if hit uh, hit info dot hit. So if it hits something, then I want to set apple dot x equal to rand int negative four four and apple dot y equal to four. And so if the apple hit the basket, all I'm doing is resetting the position. And in order for this to work, you need to add another parameter in these entities. So at the end, I'm going to add a collider. So collider is equal to a box, or a box collider. And I added that to my apple. Now I need to do that for my basket. So I added a box collider to both. So we talked about collisions in our last tutorial video. And basically, we need to add a collider parameter for or to the entities for collision detection. And then we use the intersects function to detect collisions in Unity. And when a collision happens, we reset the coordinate of the apple and move it back to the top. Alright, so now if I run this, and I hit the apple. Let's see, okay, the apple was on the left side this time. I hit the apple, you saw that the apple moved all the way back to the top. And there you go. So this is the basic structure of the game. Now we want to 
keep the score somehow. So we want to see how long we can keep doing this, and th that's by keeping the score. So down below here, I'm going to create another variable, and that's going to be equal to score. And so the score is going to be zero initially. Now in this update function, it's very easy to implement. I'm going to have a global score. That's going to be basket dx. And I create a global score. And now if they do uh, collide, so if the apple, or if the basket catches the apple, I want score to increase by one. And I want to print on the screen the score. And so I'm going to be using an f string right here. So f string apple, apples caught, and score. And so now that I have this, I want to set the position of this equal to negative. 0.8, negative, oops, negative 0.8, and 4.5, and I'm going to set the scale equal to 1, and the duration equal to 2. So now if I save and run this, let's see, when I collect this apple, Should be, let me see if this is 0.45. Now to 4.5. Alright, so that was actually 0.45. And now at the top left, you see it says apples caught. And now every single, I catch an, every single time I catch an apple, this apples caught increases. And so that works. And now that we have that, we want to, what if the apple goes past the basket? What if we miss the uh, apple? Well, that's how you know that we lost, right? And so in this update function, we can just check if the apple has passed a certain point in the Y coordinate, then that just means that the basket failed to catch the apple. So if apple.y is less than negative four or below the basket, we want to print on screen, you lost, and let's restart. And I'm going to set this up the position of 0, 0, so that the origin of 0, 0. I'm going to scale it by 2, and I'm going to set the duration equal to, equal to 2. And when you lose, of course, you want to reset the score. And also, you want to, again, reset the apple. So apple.x is equal to rand int, negative 4, 4. And apple.y is equal to 10. And so now if I run this, and I'm going to miss purposely, and let's see what happens. See the apple is falling, I'm trying to catch it, and I'm, oops, okay, I cut it. And I missed the apple, it fell below the basket, and I lost. And you saw that there was a message on the screen that says, you lost, let's restart. And it automatically disappears, because we set a duration of two seconds. And that's pretty much it. So we've just created a pretty simple apple game. But let's add in another effect. So let's add in a sound effect, and that would be much cooler. And so let me close this, and I'm going to add a sound effect here. So if the apple hit the basket, I'm going to have one sound effect. And if the apple falls below the basket and you lose, I'm going to have another sound effect. So in total, I'm going to have two sound effects. One for um, catching the apple, one for losing. And to add a sound effect, all you do is write audio and the sound. And mine is in a called assets or actually let me check mine is in a folder called sounds 
and it's thud.wav. And now I have another. Uh, so now if the apple falls below the threshold and it loose, I'm going to do the other sound, which is sounds lost.wav. And now if I play this, you'll see that when I try to catch this apple, there should be a sound onto the screen. There you go. There you go. And let me miss it. And we lost. Alright. So, this is a fairly easy game to play. And if you really want to make the game more uh, difficult and challenging, you can either increase the falling speed of the apple, or make multiple apples falling at the same time. And this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.